Dave Ping 243. Hello, guys, this is me, Dave Ping 243, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for the channel. Now, you'll uh, see what that is as soon as I click on continue here. So, uh, well, actually, did it for me, okay. That makes things a hell of a lot easier. So, uh, this is, yeah, SpongeBob, uh, Creature from the Krusty Krab. Uh, oh, wow, that's loud. Games. Yeah, I hate it when the dolphin emulator does that. Uh, by the way, yeah, this is a SpongeBob creature from the Krusty Krab, so... Uh, I'll just kind of... I'll just load in my uh, previous save file because I'm going to be starting a new game anyway, so... Uh, yeah, this is Creature from the Krusty Krab, a... Uh, <laughs> an interesting game, let's just say. Because... It's undoubtedly the weirdest goddamn SpongeBob game ever. You will you will not find a SpongeBob game uh, weirder than this one. So we kind of have a couple things here. So we have story mode, free play, uh, bonus games, extras. Uh, but I'm just going to be going through the story mode and. Well, let's uh, start a brand new game. Uh, yeah. In case if you're not familiar with this game, uh, let me just say that the story isn't really all that important, so uh, don't be too invested into it. Uh, the real meat and potatoes of this game is, well, the gameplay, and you'll see that in full force as we get into it. But yeah, I like Creature from the Krusty Krab for what it is. It's is. It's got a lot of variety in the gameplay. And, no, I did not want that to go off, okay. But yeah, it's got a lot of variety in the gameplay, and I'm really excited to, pr to just bring you this Let's Play. So, yes, I want to start. Diesel Dreaming. And we're about to be uh, presented with the premise of this game. So, Spongebob is sleeping in bed, and suddenly, his bed is kind of a weird... It's some kind of weird race car, or whatever. And he bursts through his pineapple. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever, Spongebob. Yeah, this game hovers quite a bit from, like, 60 FPS to 30 FPS. Yeah, it's got inc it's got inconsistent frame rates. Most of the gameplay is locked to 30 FPS, but there will be times where, uh... The gameplay will go up to 60 FPS. But yeah, uh, in this first section here, we're, uh, racing. And, well, yeah. Yeah, you can obviously see this is like 30 FPS. And the frames are actually dipping a little bit for me. Uh, below that point. But, yeah, for this uh, race, if you can even call it that, it's... Basically, you don't want to uh, run out of time. You you need to keep you need to keep uh, the time up in order for you to uh, go through this. Now, none of the quote unquote races are uh, that challenging. Like, in fact, 
this whole game isn't really that challenging. It's it's a very casual oriented game. Which which, you know, it kind of fits SpongeBob with being like a more casual kind of series on television. And yeah, let me just say, like, yeah, this is like this is a weird start for me to just do SpongeBob games as like Let's Plays. Like, I probably should have done, like, Legend of the Lost Spatula first. But, here's the thing, I never played that game, and, uh... I I'm waiting to do, uh... D some of the other SpongeBob games later, so... Yeah... It's... I, I decided... I decided for this to be, the like, the first SpongeBob LP that I'll do for my channel, because it's, like... It just, it's just kind of there. And this kind of goes into the whole history that I have with Spongebob. I'm I'm a pretty big fan of Spongebob as, as if this Let's Play isn't any indication of that. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm an obvious Spongebob fan. But even I will admit this is a weird-ass game that, uh, well, I'm playing right now. Yeah, yeah, a low-quality JPEG. Uh, plastered on a 3D model. That's why I think of it anyway. Like, seriously, it's like, it's like... It's like a low-quality JPEG on a 3D model. It looks so weird. Well, Dale, looks like the new competitor's lost his license already. Hello, is this thing on? Hello? Thanks for the feedback, Dale. So yeah, all throughout, um, there'll be two commentators just, uh, talking in between, uh, stuff. Their names are Rick and Dale, uh, in case if you wanted to know that, but, uh, yeah, we kind of have a, pro have, have a problem here in the form of losing our license. No, come back, cursed thing. And yeah, we're just kind of thrown into this whole situation. Again? Apparently, the underwater currents screwed SpongeBob over before in the past. But yeah, as you can see, Mrs. Puff is, uh in this kind of, like, weird, uh, need-for-speed kind of, like, version of Bikini Bottom, so... Yeah, uh, this whole game is about dreams, and we're in SpongeBob's dream, so that's why everything seems kind of weird. But trust me, it gets weirder from here on out. So yeah, these are, like, uh, Aziz. They're basically, like, the... They're basically like a currency, but they don't really matter unless if you want to get like concept art or whatever for the extras. So yeah, um, they're just kind of like filler collectibles. Uh, the main collectibles you'll be getting uh, a little bit later. So yes, uh, the main aspects of this game is that it's a 3D platformer. Um, there may be a lot of variety in this game. But, uh, the main aspect is still 3D platforming. Now, uh, there is, there is a more valuable collectible, as we'll be seeing a bit later. But right now we're having Spongebob learn a new technique. Where, uh, he can, uh, where he can, like, turn winches around. And, oh man, like... The Wii version of this game has mandatory uh, motion controls, and they are absolutely awful. Like, I, well, at least I've heard that they're absolutely awful. Um, everyone says that it is, so I'm going to believe that's the case because, 
yeah, apparently they don't work at all, and I'm willing to believe them on that front because, uh, yeah, everyone says the Wii version sucks for that reason. Uh, of course I'm playing the GameCube version, which luckily does not have motion control, so... I can just kind of play through this like normal. Yay! But yeah, there's... There's a more valuable kind of collectible it will be getting quite soon, so... Uh, I won't be collecting all of that sort of collectible just because I don't think it's that... That big of a deal, and I'm not really that much of a collector. Like, I don't... I'm not the kind of guy that plays collectathons. Uh... But yeah, back here is our first of the, like, special collectibles. As you can see, there's something pink and shiny just kind of, like, hopping about in that area. Um, the game doesn't tell us what this is right now, but this is a, this is a sleepy seed. And, specifically speaking, this is a pink sleepy seed. Uh, if you collect enough of these, you will be able to access a certain... A certain uh, different thing in the final level of the game. But since it's not really too major in my opinion, I'm not going to be collecting all the th things because some of them are kind of hidden in obscure places, even though this game is quite lin linear. And other ones are just in very annoying spots you wouldn't be able to get on your first try, so... Yeah, I... I don't really recommend going after the, the Sleepy Seeds, but they're there for the for the collectors, so... Uh, we gotta turn another winch around. But yeah, trying to turn the winches with the motion controls in the Wii version is just... I, I've heard it was absolutely awful. But yeah, we have a double jump, and... Uh, well... We don't really have anything else to do right now, but, uh, the game's slowly going... The game is slowly going to give us abilities that will help us progress to the levels. So yeah, the game's teaching us about double jumping, even though I already just showed you guys. Double jumping is pretty standard in 3D platformers. And we gotta turn more winches. Be prepared to turn a lot of winches in this uh, first stream because uh, there are actually three different dreams in the entire game, but uh, they're all divided into multiple sections. So, yeah. Uh, this game is not terribly long. In fact, it's pretty short. And one thing that one other thing that this game is notorious for, besides the fact that it's weird and that the motion controls for the Wii version is awful, apparently, is that characters just never seem to shut the hell up. And we're about to get a new ability here, which technically we could have already done. Uh, we could ground pound. And oh yeah, I just uh, showed off this other kind of thing thing here. Uh, we will be seeing what this does for a while, let's just say, but it actually also serves as, as an attack, so we can actually uh, defeat enemies if we need to, but this I think this first uh, platforming section does not have enemies. It's just mostly getting to know the basic controls as what a tutorial level should be doing. But yeah, uh, uh, this is like oil, uh, yeah, I just got hurt by it. As you can see, uh, we have five hit points, so, uh, if we, if we get hit, if we get hit five times, then uh, we will, uh, basically die and have to start from the previous, uh, checkpoint. Uh, 
Thankfully, this this game does not have uh, limited continue limited lives or continues and whatnot. Like this game is unlimited lives, so don't worry if you die. You can try things out as much as you like, and well, there's the license and Mrs. Puff and. Okay, that model is looking kind of jittery. I don't know what's up with Mrs. Puff there, but, um, okay. And curses. You made it, SpongeBob. Okay, well now done. Mrs. Puff's model is fine. I think you'll find this little dash attack and she's going to basically give us yet another ability. Use the dash attack to push that spark block into its slot. But yeah, uh, so yeah, this kind of like dash is able to, it's basically allowing us to push certain things, such as this, uh, spark block. So, so pressing the R trigger will, uh, allow us to do that, and there you go. And yes, still this game's characters do not ever shut the hell up. Hey, yeah, this whole like uh, dream of SpongeBob is basically that of, like a uh, extreme racing. Uh, Hot rod sort of like thing, like it. It kind of has that aesthetic to it. That's why you see uh, certain characters just being like crazy looking. So our youngest competitors. Uh, like that, the art style. Should be interesting, Rick. Interesting. It, it's a very interesting art style. I'll, I'll give it that. And if you were paying attention, SpongeBob actually had that face. When he was doing that two two lap uh, quote unquote race, so now we're in a race against Patrick, or I guess Piston Patrick, as as this stream wants to refer to by. But yeah, uh, technically this is still not a race because uh, we're not trying to get ahead of Patrick. Like Patrick will basically always be ahead of you, and he'll he'll be occasionally dropping bombs on you. Don't worry, you don't have hit points in this, uh, they'll j the bombs will just slow you down, and of course we have boost pads. And the, the time is a little bit more strict here, but again, it's not that bad. As long as you're landing in, like, at least a couple of boost pads, then you should be okay. It's really the final race in the game, which is actually the final level in the game. Uh, I won't say anything more about that, but, uh, the, that's the most challenging race, quote-unquote, in the game, and, uh, and, uh, it, it actually is kind of possible for you to, to fail it the first time, because, of the, because of the fact that the time limit is kind of strict. But yeah, I, 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 I like the performance that Patrick's voice actor is, like, giving to, uh, well, Piston Patrick. It, 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 it really makes us see, like, a different light in, for the character. It's really interesting to see, and, well, hear. And, oh yeah, uh, there was also, there's also a Sleepy Sea here, uh, I didn't mean to grab it, but it just kind of—it was just kind of like in my way. So, uh, yeah, I guess might as well as get it. But yeah, the the, the laps around this track uh, this time will be a, a bit different. Well, well, lap one is different from the other two because. The other two will have, like, fallen debris. And now we're in the third lap. But yeah, uh... 
yeah. I hate how inconsistent the frame rate is in this game. Like, it just constantly jumps from, like, 30 FPS to 60 in certain, uh, sections. And when it comes to racing sections in particular, it just kind of, like, hovers from, like, 30 FPS to it just dipping down to, like, 25. So, yeah, I, it could be, like, a nightmare just trying to be able to get a solid FPS in for a Let's Play this game. And again, Spongebob is talking all the freaking time. But yeah, we have plenty of time to spare, and we've still kind of won, technically. And for the fans of, fans of Spongebob, you will recognize that voice very well as Doug Lawrence, aka AKA the voice actor of Plankton. And yeah, he's our next racing opponent, but uh, he smashed up our... our vehicle, so... Smashing a competitor's car, Dale. So yeah, that's not good. There aren't any rules, Rick. Reminds me of my first marriage, Dale. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of funny, looking back as an adult, like... You know, with Rick saying, like, reminds me of my first marriage. Like, that's a bit of an adult joke. So yeah, this is the first, uh, platforming level in the game that has, uh... Well, the first platforming section, I should say, that has enemies. So, get SpongeBob's missing car parts back. So, uh, yes, we almost certainly do so. And right here, uh, this is a... This is a checkpoint slash uh, save point. Where, if you die, you'll then you'll come back to this point and... And, uh... Well, whenever you approach the point, that is, and you could save by by uh, doing the uh, main attack we're about to get rather soon. But yeah, let's just do the dash and knock down this telephone tel telephone pole and get get a move on. So we're about to get our basic attack here, which we weren't able to do before. And by pressing B, SpongeBob makes uh, makes SpongeBob break break out the sand slap attack, which, as you can imagine, s uh, stings a bit. It's a bit hard for me to s to see all that. So yeah, it's a safe place. It checkpoints your your progress, fills up your health, and if you slap it by pressing B, it will even save the game. How remarkably useful. Uh, very well, Mrs. Puff. And what's cool about the sand slap attack is that you can actually hold down on the B button and it'll constantly... And SpongeBob will constantly, like, redo the attack and there goes the frame kind of tipping again. The frame's kind of tipping again. Uh, but yeah, for every enemy you defeat, you get a few uh, Zs. Like a few to se to several C's. All this gliding reminds me of the driving school. Which apparently implies that the driving school was rather violent. But yeah, um I don't wanna keep you guys waiting for too long. Let's just uh continue onward. I think after I do this uh, platforming section, I'll end off the episode. So, uh, yeah, this first episode is... I don't know, it, it might be, like, uh, either a bit long or short for for the Let's Play, depending, depending on uh, how episodes turn out. Either way, it's going to be decently length, 
And yeah, here we gotta collect uh, these gasoline sort of uh, tanks. And, uh, well, we gotta get all ten of them. Yeah, like I said before, this game is not that hard at all. Like, it's very casual friendly. Uh, much like Plants vs. Zombies. Except we, except this time we have a, we have it based off of a licensed uh, show. Turn it as fast as you can, boy. Work those crazy arms. <laughs> I, I feel like Mrs. Puff's voice actress actually had a lot of fun uh, voicing out the lines. And you know, it's kind of one of those things where the the lines of this uh, game were they're just kind of like repeated over and over again, like. You know, the ones that aren't, like, in cutscenes, uh, they're, like, uh, quotable in, like, meme form, so you could literally make a meme out of, like, uh, just re repeating quotes in this game, and, you know, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, like, uh, it's a bit irritating when you're actually playing through the game. So yeah, we got ourselves a car part. So, uh, it says 1 to 3, so we have two more to collect. You could use your sponge lunge against big meanies like this. Stun him before going in for the knockout. So yeah, if we use the dash attack on the shield enemies, we'll stun them, and by doing the sand slap attack, uh, they'll go down just like that. So yeah, they're a bit tougher than normal enemies, but really, they're not too bad. They're only uh, kind of bad when they're paired up with other enemies. But even then, they're just kind of like more of an annoyance than anything else. Now, you kind of have to hit them with the bash attack in the right angle, otherwise, uh, they'll be stunned, yes, but they won't be able to be, uh, struck and down by the sand slap attack, which I find to be annoying. So yeah, we gotta smash all these uh, crates in order to get uh, these, uh, I, I don't know, like, engine pieces? I I'm sure the game explained what what the hell these things were, but um, I wasn't really paying attention. But yeah, there's, other, there's another reason why I decided to do this uh, Spongebob game first, besides the fact that it wasn't really plot-heavy of, of a game. It's more of the reason of the fact that, uh, well... It's more of a fact of, like, because, uh... What was I trying to say? Uh... Maybe it will come to mind as I fight these enemies. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's because of the fact that it's casual friendly, and you know, I'm more of a casual gamer, so I kind of take that as like priority when when playing out Let's Plays. Like how how much of an easy time am I going to have with uh, the games? Um, playing for the channel, you know? And I, I thought this might have been like a like a perfect next kind of like uh, casual let's play after Plants vs. Zombies. So yeah, I'm I typically don't want to let's play games that uh, I haven't beaten because it 
because I want to make sure that I that, that I would be able to beat the games uh, that I would like to play first before actually doing a let's play on them. So that's why I'm getting all the uh, casual, friendly, kind of like games out of the way. And yeah, uh, we're almost done with this platforming section right here, so, uh... We got another, uh... Save checkpoint sort of, uh, thing, and... Well, there's the last car part, a spring. And we have a bit of a horde of enemies to deal with, so... Remember, those guys can't work without their tools, so... Collect 20 of them. So yeah, me and Spongebob uh, kind of go way back. Like, I used to watch the... I, I used to watch the show so much uh, back in the early 2000s as a kid. Like, of course, I got to know the first three, first three seasons of Spongebob, and you know... Uh, oh boy. Uh, yeah, they have like... These guys kind of have like their own ground pound. Uh, and the camera kind of goes wildly uh, when you when you use the the, the dash move. So yeah, it's a bit annoying, but uh, I got to be well acquainted with the show in the early 2000s with its first three seasons, and you know they have some great episodes. You know, uh. Um, uh, my relationship with Season 1 is a bit, uh, iffy at times, compared to the other two classic ser two classic seasons. Like, Season 1 was still pretty good, it's just that, uh, there were a, a, a couple of, like, a couple to a few episodes I didn't really care for too much, but, like, not anything offensive, just, uh... Just, you know, plus with season one being like, uh, hand drawn, but with, uh, cell, cell animation compared to its digitally animated, uh, contemporaries of season, seasons two and three, it just kind of looked weird to me. But yeah, I, I really like season two. Seasons 2 and 3, they were, uh, fantastic. Like, episodes like Band Geeks, for instance, is, like, a really good episode. Like, I don't think anyone can argue with that. And yeah, uh, early Spongebob was just great, and also the move, the first movie was uh, great as well. My goodness, you're becoming one of my best pupils. Uh, I liked season four. Uh, liked parts of season five, and then season six was like quite bad. Like, in fact, it was. One of the worst seasons of Spongebob. And then season, season 7 was kind of in the same boat as season 6. Uh, season 8 was eh, overall, and season 9 was was finally when the, when the show was starting to get kind of good again. But it was also the time where I just kind of, like, stopped watching modern Spongebob, because I just kind of, like, got so fed up with, uh, the modern Spongebob formula. But, ah, oh, phooey, I, I might as, I might as well... I might as well just go on a little bit longer. 
Mm, maybe not. Yeah, it's getting kind of a long episode for... Uh, I don't want to go over 35 minutes of this, so... I'm going to pause right here, so... Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants Creature from the Krusty Krab, and next time we will race against Plankton and see where that takes us from there. Uh, see you guys then.